In this lesson, we will examine a systematic way to organize your results when testing the sufficiency of a statement. Now in this question, we are told that x is an integer, and we must determine whether 4 to the power of x is less than 3 to the power of x plus 1. Statement 1 tells us that x is positive. Does this statement provide sufficient information to answer the target question? In other words, does knowing that x is positive provide enough information to determine whether or not 4 to the power of x is less than 3 to the power of x plus 1? Well, it's hard to tell at the moment. Let's try plugging in some numbers to see if this reveals anything. We'll use a table to help organize our results. First, we'll choose some values for x that satisfy the condition in statement 1 that says x must be positive. Then, using these values for x, we'll ask our target question, is 4 to the power of x less than 3 to the power of x plus 1? So, to begin, if x is positive, x could equal 1. So let's plug that in here. We'll go down here to compare 4 to the power of x with 3 to the power of x plus 1 when x equals 1. Now, if x equals 1, then 4 to the power of x will equal 4. If x equals 1, 3 to the power of x plus 1 will equal 9. So when x equals 1, the answer to our target question is yes. 4 to the power of x is less than 3 to the power of x plus 1. Let's try another value for x. If x is positive, x could equal 4. Let's go down here to compare 4 to the power of x with 3 to the power of x plus 1 when x equals 4. Now if x equals 4, then 4 to the power of x equals 4 to the power of 4, which equals 256. And if x equals 4, then 3 to the power of x plus 1 equals 3 to the power of 5, which equals 243. So when x equals 4, the answer to our target question is no. 4 to the power of x is not less than 3 to the power of x plus 1. So when x equals 1, the answer to our target question is yes. And when x equals 4, the answer to our target question is no. Since we cannot definitively answer the target question, statement 1 is not sufficient. Let's try another example. In this question, we must determine the remainder when x is divided by 3. Statement 1 tells us that when x is divided by 4, the remainder is 1. Does this statement provide sufficient information to answer the target question? Well, once again, we'll use a table to organize our results. First, we'll choose some values for x that satisfy the condition in statement 1 that says when x is divided by 4, the remainder is 1. Then, using these values for x, we'll ask our target question, what is the remainder when x is divided by 3? So, what are some possible values of x? Well, if we get a remainder of 1 when x is divided by 4, then x could equal 5. Now we'll ask the target question. What is the remainder when x is divided by 3? Well, 5 divided by 3 is equal to 1 with remainder 2. So the answer is 2. Okay, what are some other possible values for x? Well, if we get a remainder of 1 when x is divided by 4, then x could also equal 9. Now we'll ask the target question. What is the remainder when x is divided by 3? Well, when 9 is divided by 3, we get 3 with remainder 0. So the answer here is 0. So when x equals 5, the answer to the target question is 2. And when x equals 9, the answer to the target question is 0. Since we cannot definitively answer the target question, statement 1 is not sufficient. Now let's look at one more example. The target question here asks, is x less than x squared? And statement 1 tells us that x is positive. Does this statement provide enough information to answer the target question? We'll use a table to organize our results. First, we'll choose some values for x that satisfy the condition in statement 1 that says x is positive. Then using these values for x, we'll ask our target question, is x less than x squared? So, if x is positive, x could equal 2. Let's go down here to compare x and x squared when x equals 2. When x equals 2, x squared equals 4. So, when x equals 2, the answer to our target question is yes. 
x is less than x squared. Now let's try another value for x. If x is positive, then x could also equal 0 0.5. When x equals 0 0.5, x squared will equal 0 0.25. So when x equals 0 0.5, the answer to our target question is no. x is not less than x squared. So x equals 2 and x equals 0 0.5 both satisfy the condition in statement 1 that says x must be positive. However, in one case, the answer to our target question is yes. And in the other case, the answer to our target question is no. Since we cannot definitively answer the target question, statement 1 is not sufficient. Now you may have noticed that in all three examples, the statement was insufficient. You will find that the table method works best for statements that you suspect might be insufficient. The reason for this is that if we cannot demonstrate that there are two different answers to a target question, then the results will be inconclusive. Here's what I mean. The target question here is, is 6x less than 7x? Statement 1 tells us that x is positive. Using a table to organize our results, we'll choose values of x that satisfy the condition in statement 1, and then we'll ask our target question, is 6x less than 7x? So if x is positive, then x could equal 2. If x equals 2, then the answer to our target question is yes. 6x is less than 7x. Let's try another value for x. If x is positive, then x could equal 5. If x equals 5, the answer to our target question is yes. 6x is less than 7x. When x equals 9, the answer to our target question is yes. When x equals 33, the answer is yes. And when x equals 100, the answer to our target question is still yes. So what can we conclude here? Using the results from our table, can we conclude with certainty that statement 1 is sufficient? It's hard to say. The table results seem to suggest that if x is positive, then 6x will always be less than 7x. But perhaps we have simply neglected to try a value for x that would yield a different answer to the target question. Let's compare these results to the results in the last question. In this example, we showed that when x equals 2, the answer to the target question is yes, and when x equals 0 0.5, the answer to our target question is no. Since we have two conflicting answers to our target question, we can be certain that statement 1 is insufficient. In this example, the best we can do is say that statement 1 seems sufficient, but we can't really be certain unless we try every positive value for x, which we can't do. Now in this particular example, the best strategy would be to first rephrase the target question. If we take the target question and subtract 6x from both sides, we get a new target question. Is 0 less than x? In other words, is x positive? Now statement 1 tells us that x is positive, so statement 1 must be sufficient. Here's one last example that demonstrates the limitations of the table method. Here we are told that x is an integer, and we must determine whether x is prime. Statement 1 tells us that x is odd. So we'll use a table to organize our results. First, we'll choose some values for x that satisfy the condition in statement 1 that says x must be odd. Then, using these values for x, we'll ask our target question, is x prime? So, if x is odd, x could equal 3. If x equals 3, the answer to our target question is yes, x is prime. If x is odd, x could also equal 5. If x equals 5, the answer to our target question is yes, x is prime. When x equals 17, the answer to our target question is yes. When x equals 19, the answer is yes. When x equals 23, the answer to our target question is yes. So what can we conclude here? The results from our table seem to suggest that statement 1 is sufficient. But is it? The answer is no. Statement 1 is not sufficient. Unfortunately, I have chosen my numbers poorly, and as such, I may erroneously convince myself that statement 1 is sufficient when it is not. If I had chosen my numbers better, I would have chosen a number such as 15 as a value for x. 
when x equals 15, the answer to our target question is no. x is not prime. Now that I have two conflicting answer choices to the target question, I can be certain that statement 1 is not sufficient. Okay, so that was the table method. This technique has several benefits. First, it can help organize your thoughts. It can clearly demonstrate the insufficiency of a statement. And it may hint at the sufficiency of a statement. The primary drawback here is that the results are inconclusive for statements that are sufficient. As such, the table method is best applied when you suspect that a statement may be insufficient.